So, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name, as I said, is Praveen Michandani from One Access Networks. And my theme today, I've got a slightly provocative title, you know, why the operator is moving away from pure virtualization. The fact is, they need to make it work. And there are various ways to make it work, and I'll describe them during the course of this presentation. So let's think about what is pure virtualization before I attempt to show the ways that we're evading it. The first is, you know, all VNS in the data center. And we've heard from many speakers about why that is a desirable thing, and those pros are on the left. I don't intend to go through too much about the pros because you've heard from many other speakers about what they are. But let's think about what some of the challenges are. There are latency and traffic engineering issues. If everything goes to the center, even to a distributed data center model, um, you have some issues to deal with. And the operators are not yet clear about the scope of those challenges. I know that certain large operators in North America are actually planning to build lots and lots of distributed data centers specifically to address uh, the latency issue. The next thing is the cost of building those data centers. Yeah? These are typically greenfield. Yeah? You may have the premises, but all the equipment and infrastructure that is built in those to provide the virtualized hosting environment is new equipment and uh, needs to be monetized. And then, if you put all your network functions into that uh, data center, how do you address some of the scalability issues? Yeah? VMs are great, yeah? but you need dedicated resources for those VMs. Even if you use containers, there are some dedicated resources given to those containers. So depending on whether you're looking at an enterprise deployment or a residential deployment, there's some big issues to be able to deal with there. And there have been quite a few discussions about OpenStack, and it's been openly criticized by some of the operators as not being mature. Sorry, am I Mr. Yeah. Um, another way of looking at uh, pure virtualization is to look at on-prem VNFs using a white box. Yeah? A lot of focus by the operators on this. Uh, particularly in North America, where a lot of the advances are being made, a lot of enterprise customers have do-it-yourself networks. And the operators are seeing this as a way to increase the wallet share from those enterprises. They put a platform on the premise, then at least they can charge for that platform. If on top of that, they can put one or two VNS that they provide as a managed service to the enterprise, then again, they're increasing their wallet share. They do recognize they need to give some flexibility to their large, particularly their large enterprise customers, to be able to populate their own VNS, which may have certain vertical or regional flavors that need to be addressed. And one of the key things here is appliance consolidation. Yeah. You may have a number of appliances, typically x86 based already, but individual functions on individual appliances, put them all together, and there is some ROI today. And I do genuinely believe that this is a deployable model today. But, and there is a big but, Hector mentioned you know, the price of roughly 300 euros for a managed service platform using classical technology today. I'm telling you, a white box is at least double that. And the first boxes that are being deployed are about five times that. So there's a problem here that needs to be addressed. Now, I know the guy from, uh, from Sean Hackle from Verizon, from Verizon talked about the evolution of uh, white box prices, but we're still not close to approaching the level uh, of a classical CP today. And then the white box is typically an Ethernet only box. What do we do about DSL and what do we do about 4G or LTE? And there's a slightly more philosophical but still important commercial question. The whole premise of a white box is that you can upsell. But in order to upsell, you need to have the compute and storage resources available on demand inside, already inside the white box. In a centralized model, it's fine. You add a blade, you add a new, a new chassis as you uh, upsell customers. But if it's on-prem, you need to have those resources available more or less already deployed in advance to allow that upsell. 
And then, of course, the maturity of the service assurance and, and troubleshooting tools. And again, many speakers have addressed that in previous presentations. So where are we today? Yeah, it's a mixed landscape. Yeah. The services that have been delivered on-prem today, and it's mostly on-prem, um, are built on grey boxes. What is a grey box? It's a network processor with x86 compute capability, either as a slot in blade, yeah, or the design allows that already. So that's what's been deployed in 2016, yeah, and two or three operators, particularly in North America, have deployed those. White box CPUs are seen as the way forward. The reason those grey boxes were initially deployed was typically they came from vendors already integrated into the operator systems. The onboarding costs were lower. They were using technology that they knew. But it still gave them the ability to claim, yes, I now have the ability to deploy virtualized uh, network functions. Quite frankly, centralized, the centralized model is a work in progress. There are a couple of services launched. I know the guy from Colt came up and talked about what they were doing. And they are clearly in advance, certainly in Europe, in doing this. Yeah? But as I said, those issues that I, I highlighted on a previous slide are still there, yeah? not least the ROI uh, one, and the scalability and operational issues that need to be addressed. And then there's another, another issue, which is why are we undertaking all of this expense to deploy exactly the same services that I do today? So there is this search for something new. What's new? I think SD-WAN is seen as sort of new, uh, and there is some focus on that. But most, most VNFs are substitutes for what is already provided today. And the initial areas of focus are the ones that you can see at the bottom of this slide, you know, the vRouter, SD-WAN security, and uh, the virtualized SPC. So let's think about this issue of scalability. Yeah? If you're a residential operator, you have millions of customers depending on the size of your region or addressable market. Even if you're delivering enterprise customers, delivering services for enterprise customers, you need to scale to hundreds of thousands or millions, again, depending on the region that you address. But VMs, as I said already, and containers, both require dedicated resources. So our view is you need high-density, multi-tenancy to be able to address, particularly in the residential sector. But if you go down the multi-tenancy uh, route, there are some specific issues that need to be addressed. So one is that for the individual tenants within a VM, how do you manage their life cycle? You know, the techniques to manage the VM itself via the hypervisor, they are well known. But if you have to dig deep into the VM for multiple tenants, there's a specific set of issues that need to be addressed there. And then each tenant may have a different set of functions that need to be service chained. And that also needs to be addressed. And then there's the, the issue of service elasticity. This is when you need to move tenants or groups of tenants to a more economic server because it's out of hours or because you're, you've got a spike in demand, you need to move them around. Then again, you need specific handles to be able to do that. So these are some of the issues that need to be addressed, but particularly for residential, you need multi-tenancy, and you also need the ability to dig into the VPM and have specific handles to address some of the issues that I have highlighted here. So the focus initially has been on on-prem deployment of virtualized network services. And as a result of some of the issues that I've highlighted, we see various models emerging as to how to actually achieve that. Many of them are not full virtualization. Some of them are on the journey to virtualization, but each are addressed by a number of pragmatic issues, which is how big is my installed base? Where am I in the equipment refresh cycle? What is the cost of deploying VNFs and how do I do that? How many of my customers are actually going to buy those VNFs in the first place? All of these issues are debated hotly inside the operators today. And we've seen a number of different models emerge to address those issues. The classical CPE, 
that is NetConf enabled, the grey box CP, which I've already talked about a little bit, the white box CP, and the thin CP. These are what I would call single CP deployment models. There's a couple of other interesting models that have come about to try and address some of these economic issues and also to try and address legacy. And that is what I call a sidecar deployment model. So essentially a two-box solution, yeah, whereby you can deal with some of the uh, DSL and 4G connectivity issues, as well as maybe just a limited number of customers actually want the VNFs, so why give them a white box for just maybe 10 or 20% of my addressable market? And then another sidecar model, which really talks about how to deal with TDM and analog connectivity uh, with the NetConf enabled voice gateway. So let me just skip through these models very quickly so you can understand what they are. So the NetConf enabled classical CP. This is the CP that's being deployed today. Often DSL, often with multiple different types of interfaces. Relatively economic. The operators know and love it. But if that, if that classical CP could also talk NetConf, wouldn't that be a great thing? So what we're seeing now is the emergence of CPEs that are classical, with the economics of classical CPEs that can talk CLI and TR69 today, but also can talk NetConf, and that facilitates and provides a real uh, practical solution for service migration. It also future-proofs the CPE and is a practical way to deal with the 4G and DSL connectivity. The grey box CPE. This has been at the vanguard of the delivery of services, virtualized delivery of services, at least on-prem, uh, in North America. It's a quick way to get there, early board. Frankly, between the two major North American operators, there's a competition to, be, to see who can be first. Yeah? A lot of egos are involved here, but also they want to monetize uh, the introduction of these services, so they've done it. In NetConf enabled voice gateway alongside it, then the routing capability resides in the white box. The white box remains the main deployment model for the network functions, and the, the NetConf enabled voice gateway provides that ability to provide connectivity for TDM and analog. So a lot of models, I've gone through them very quickly, but I hope I've shown you uh, the differences, and all of these models are being deployed and considered by operators today. This is the reality. This is what we're getting from the coalface, if you like, of actually deploying NFE for our customers. And what's steering the choices is service migration. Yeah? And a number of factors affect that. One is just plain economic pragmatism. Yeah? What have I got already? What are the connections, uh, connectivity options that my, my customers require? Where am I going in terms of deploying different access technology? Where am I in the equipment refresh cycle? This sets the timing of the migration. What's also clear that even within operators, there's no one-size-fits-all. They have different customer groups, different customer segments, customers that are more DIY or less DIY, customers with appliance consolidation requirements, and SMB customers. And what they're doing is for each segment of customer, they're using the appropriate model that actually fits. And then, of course, there's future-proofing, a critical selection criteria. Business needs to go on today. I can't wait for all of the, all of the issues to be addressed in terms of centralized delivery of VNFs. I can't wait for the data center to be, to be, to be built to deal with the traffic engineering and latency issues. Yeah? And most of all, I can't wait for my IT department to deliver me what I want. The big elephant in the room is the IT departments are absolutely struggling to address some of the requirements that need to deploy this. The orange guy this morning said 20,000 man days. 20,000 man days? Okay, orange may have the resources to be able to undertake that, but what about the other operators? So one of our recommendations to the operators is make sure that the CPU deploy today can speak multiple languages your classical provisioning and service assurance, as well as the next generation one. And then think about the different issues in your install base and how to get there. So my key message to you is there are different ways to migrate. There are different options available, but you can actually do it today 
if you take the right steps. Thank you very much.